Welcome. I'm just going to share my screen and uh, just go over a couple of things that were shared to me uh, from CISA and then what will lead our conversation and whatnot. Uh, can everybody see my screen where it says CISA Connect Meeting One? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And do you guys see the participant thing over there too? No. Okay. Um, so our goals for today are going to be to uh, A, number one, sorry, meet other educators, which we're doing already. Uh, number two, build relationships. Uh, we're going to have four meetings together and then engage in meaningful conversations. Um, some of the housekeeping things just right away. Welcome. I've been talking to some of you already for almost uh, six minutes. <laughs> some of you are just coming in right now. Uh, we're going to have four chats, as I said, and I'm going to try to keep them always at 6 p.m. Bangkok time. We're going to have another one right again tomorrow, uh, and then we'll have another one next week. And that takes us to our next point, which is the final session is to be decided by all of us together. And it, CISA says that we need to have a date before September 30th. Would we like it right at, like, closer to that date or closer to, I don't know, like in a couple weeks? What do we think? Uh, maybe we can use the chat. Maybe somebody throw up some ideas. Would we like it closer to September 30th or earlier on? I think it's kind of like end of the semester, right? Or half the semester, so maybe it will be very busy. Maybe before that will be great. Will be better? Okay. Uh, maybe some time to use My some ideas. Before we... I don't know about other schools, but our start date got pushed back to the 23rd of August. Yeah. So if other schools are starting a little later, I mean, mm. we want to have time to like try some of these things that we're talking about. So maybe like early September or mm. mid so we don't go too yeah. late, but also not too early that we can't really use it meaningfully to. Okay. My, um, my start date got pushed back. Got pushed back? Yeah. Okay. How about we say the September 6th, which is a Monday? I would say, could we go a bit later? Because for me and Payne, we don't yeah. start until the beginning of September now. Okay. Uh, what about September 20th right now? That would be, again, That's a Monday? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pen that in for now. Uh, of course, if, there, if this is a major problem for one of us or something, we, then maybe we can be flexible and we can talk about it uh, if it's a major problem by like August 2nd. But for now, I'll say that it's going to be September 20th and it'll be at 6 p.m. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, next thing, sessions are scheduled to be 30 minutes, but we can go longer. Would you like to keep it right at 30? Would we like to go a bit longer? It's up to us again. Maybe we could say like 30 minutes, but like hard stop at 45. If we like are having, you know, good conversation, but really just respecting that 45 minutes. How does everybody feel about that? Sounds good to me. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds yep. good. Yeah. That way there's like some wiggle room, but yes, that'll be the beginning of the school year, that last meeting too. So, I mean, if I'm awake by 645, it's a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> like these first couple meetings when we're not in school might be different than that fourth yeah. one where it's like, ah, guys, yeah. <laughs> I'm in, I'm out. Okay. Okay, 45 minutes, hard stop, 30 minutes-ish. Sounds great. Uh, we're already using the chat for back channel. I'm gonna share a Google Doc in a minute that we can throw stuff in there or we don't need to. Uh, and we don't need to take notes like we're in a meeting, but it's there, okay? And then my re these meetings are being recorded just by default because it's through my school that I use uh, the Zoom, but they're gonna be deleted after seven days. If somebody really wants one, then we can ask the group if you want a recording of this, but otherwise, hopefully just our docs and everything will keep everything. Uh, we're gonna follow the CSA outlines. These are the sessions that came from them. I don't know if you saw the outline of the session, but it's basically kind of dictated, here's what your conversation can be about, and I'm just facilitating that. But I'm happy to answer questions, and I'm happy to ask lots of questions, because I bet you guys can screen share and show me a lot more things. So that's kind of cool. Uh, any other, any others of, uh, uh, things that we need to think about before we get into conversations and stuff. I have a question though. Um, yes, can I get a copy of the recorded meetings 
that maybe I could submit for my EST certification? Sure. Yes. Okay. okay. So our, and I'll our, talk to you probably next time about it. Thanks. You want you want the actual digital copy of this recorded meeting? Um, yeah, I'm I'm just asking permission for everybody because I'm taking a certification, and I'm thinking of like just maybe asking everybody's permission to, you know, use our recording of whatever we're going to be learning from each other, to use it for my cert uh, certification. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. From, from me, that's okay, and yeah, uh, uh, I guess. If anybody disagrees and they don't want to say anything, uh, then maybe you can email me and I'll keep yeah. it uh, anonymous and I'll just say, sorry, Art, there's somebody that uh, doesn't. Yes, please, please okay. do that. Yeah. Is that Thanks. okay? Thanks. Okay, uh, I think that Hannah has joined us again and uh, we have most other people. So our next order of business is, I thought I would tell you a little bit about me uh, before you start going, hey, who's this guy leading things? My, that's my wife and my son, who's nine years old, and my daughter, who's upstairs screaming right now. You might hear in the background, <laughs> who's now five months, no, six months old. Oh. Uh, I'm Canadian, and I come from that flashing dot right there that's Niagara Falls, Ontario. Uh, and then my timeline of education was after I got my first degree, I moved down to uh, Guatemala, where I worked in Colegio Interamericano. It was really cool. And I liked it so much, I went back to Canada, got more teaching degrees and stuff because I wanted to move overseas again, where I went, moved to Taiwan to Sinchu International School. Uh, from Sinchu, I bumped over back over here to Thai Thailand, where I worked just down the street at uh, Concordian International School. And then from there, I moved out to uh, Istanbul and worked at Istanbul International Community School. I'm telling you the names of the schools because you might be going, hey, you might know, hey, you might know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I moved over to Nanjing in China where I was working uh, for about six years. And that's where I got my, uh, I started with CESA, brought it in in 2015 as an admin, then became an ad, uh, ambassador in 2016. And then eventually back uh, just last year, I moved here to Verso in Thailand and then just became CESA certified educator uh, the other day. <laughs> so in six words, if I was to summarize myself and think about how I'm doing this, because you might be tasked with the same thing, I would say in six words that number one, I'm a father. Number two, I'm an educator. Number three, uh, I like to do research. Uh, I also love being an artist and trying to figure things out. That was my first degree was at, from OCAD. Uh, I worked on and finally finished my PhD in 2019, and I'm an entrepreneur. Those would be six words that would describe me. An entrepreneur is not a spelling mistake. It's a person that comes up with uh, things within the establishment that uh, he or she is working at already and makes things better. So now, the reason that I did that is because our icebreaker is a six-word summary to describe yourself. You might want to get a pen, pencil, or some paper. We're gonna have about one minute to get this prepared and each person is gonna be asked to share. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing. Hmm. <laughs> and let's see. So again, if you can come up with six, six words, words to describe yourself and then uh, just basically like I did. Now I use all nouns and I realized I could have used all adjectives or adverbs <laughs> and whoever would like to go first mm -hmm. all right i'll go i'll get it get it over and done with i'm, I'm okay, always mary always a pen on that all right, <clears throat> so I have to start off the same as you. So mother, an educator, um, inquirer, innovator, I put traveler, adventurer kind of together and friend. What was the last one? Friend. A friend, okay. I think friends, um, particularly in the international scene, it's really important the relationships you and the friendships you establish. Yeah, thank you. Mm. And how many kids do you have? Two. You have two okay. as well. One here with me and one who's 25 and back in New Zealand. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Anybody like to go third? Hi, Hannah. 
Um, I put, I'm a, a learner, an educator. Um, I think I'm pretty creative. So I like doing lots of arts and crafty stuff. I'm pretty nosy. Um, so I'm really kind of a curious person. I'm a bit nosy. Um, I consider myself like a, like a solution finder. So if there's a problem, I always think there's a solution. So, um, and I'm a bit of an extrovert, so I'm not very shy. So I can be, um, yeah, I'm not afraid to be a bit silly as well. When, when needed, not all the time, but when. So when nosy required. and inquirer, are they kind of the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, well, I, think, I think being a bit of an extrovert and then being curious, so I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to maybe ask questions and that's to little people as well as older people. If that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna wait for volunteers. <laughs> okay, I'll do I'll do volunteer. Thank you, Art. <laughs> okay, so I would like to say first, I'm a Christian. Uh, I believe in God and then yeah, the church. And then a husband because I love my wife and um yeah, I I really love to like date my my wife and uh father to three kids uh, i have uh, one girl and two boys um i wrote here as well learner because it's a never-ending learning uh you know experience life um I, I wrote down creator because um yeah i like to create things i i do carpentry um you know my wife wants me to build this i build it uh like to be creative about doing things and yeah, once I learn and I create, I educate. I, I want to like share those experiences with my students and then make them create their own, you know, thing. So yeah, that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Fantastic. Three kids and how old are the kids? 11, um, seven and uh, three, four, four year gaps. Wow, okay. <laughs> So that when one is, uh, you know, graduate or in the university, you know, another one will go into university <laughs> and, uh, you know, one, one, one person at a time. <laughs> I, I was thinking, wow. Um, I'll go next. Thank you, Jenna. Um, my first one, I've put lover as opposed to a fighter because that covers friends, family, my partner. Mm -hmm. um, educator, lifelong learner explorer because um that's like research travel everything can go under that umbrella innovator and fighter because i think lover I'm and then you you know can't alpha omega, you, you end it with a fighter <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh and and one of those I, I heard you sneak it in that was lifelong learner <laughs> oh yeah but you just got yeah it sounds like a ISTE, <laughs> sounds like an ISTE uh, goal on there or... well yeah actually i am doing my SD as well Ark. so we should get together yeah <laughs> awesome one of the goals thank you jenna can i go next please okay can i go next is that crew, crew pen, crew pen. yeah okay. so i am a learner the educator as well and I am a musician and mm. I love cooking and I also a pet lover and I am a wife <laughs> and a wife okay. and I have so many questions so what kind of what's your favorite musical instrument so basically I play the Thai music oh, yeah. like the Thai classical music thing yeah. Mm. Right. And you love animals. All animals? Yes. Centipedes? Yes. Like pets. Only pets. Not oh. my wife only like pets. animal. No. <laughs> only pets. Yeah. Not monitors. And yeah. and for people who live mm -hmm. in uh, Vietnam or in uh, Brunei, you might not realize that crew means teacher, right? Oh, you froze crew pen. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, in in Thailand, crew, uh, I'm pretty sure it means teacher. So uh, that's what, or, or ajan. Yes, right. yes. Okay, thank you, yeah. Rupan. Thank you, Rupan. Are you Thai? Yes, I'm Thai. Okay, <laughs> okay cool. 
I'm Nate. Hey, hey, hi. Sorry, I'm late, but um, before I start, I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Nun. It's me number one in Thai, and oh, you can follow me. Yes, also Kru Nun. Uh, I'm teaching at Rugby School Thailand. Uh, it's in Chonburi. So right now we are in the red zone. So um, uh, I'm not sure about my school open uh, when, but uh, I'm very curious about that. Um, but uh, very nice to meet you all here. It seems like uh, my, you know, like um, all my learners happen again. Just like, you know, uh, stay away from everyone for a long time. Um, for myself, I am a Thai teacher and um, I am aunt. I didn't have my kids, but I have two niece and two nephews. Um, I, I am a dog lover. I have 12 dogs in my house. <laughs> it's like very crazy. So um, my life always like uh, busy and you know like crazy like barking all the time so that is why i'm quite a little bit um hard when you uh, when we have to be at six but uh because i may be busy a little bit in the afternoon but it's all it's okay um and i am a positive thinker um also explorer I'm not good in, uh, you know, like te technology, but I like to, to learn. Uh, so that is why I, I try to come with the seesaw and uh, continue to, to be the uh, seesaw ambassador. Um, so I think, and I am a, uh, a baker. I like to make something like cake or uh, pancake or whatever, like, so um, it's quite easy to, to uh, you know, work from home and eat everything by myself. Hi, okay. Did you say you have 12 dogs? Yes. <laughs> it's okay. just like, it come up and, you know, like, um, I have two at first and then um, they're married. I don't know how to say with the dog, but it's just like they say uh, bird and then it's all with me. So it's 12 now. Oh, the dogs had babies. Yes. Gosh. Okay. And we have two more. I'll go. Thank you, Heidi. Um, okay. So my first word I have is family because I'm a wife and a mother. I also have three children. Um, mine are a little older. They're uh, 12, 13, and, or no, 13, 14, and 15 right now. So they'll be in seventh, eighth, and 10th grade. So they're in secondary school. Um, and then I teach elementary. They like that they're not in the same department as me anymore. Um, and then for my second one, I put community because uh, actually the reason I came to Thailand, I've been here for about 20 years and I didn't come to teach. I came to work at a community foundation that helps children. And the mission is to make sure that they all have access to education. So I've always been passionate about the importance of education. I just love like making that connection between families and communities and how we can all work together. And COVID has really like brought out the best in people in that way. Um, and then my third one is educator. I have over the years transitioned and become an educator in a different way. Um, and then my uh, fourth word is projects because I love uh, project-based learning and cross-curricular stuff and just really connecting everything. And I like the way that Seesaw makes that so easy to just differentiate and adapt and implement things in a cool way, especially in the, in the circumstances that we've been in lately. Uh, and then for my fifth word, I had teamwork. I love working with people. I'm glad to have this little team here. Um, but as it, you know, in my different schools that I've been at, I enjoy working together in whatever kind of groups or teams we get to do different things in. And then my last one, I just put down encourager because I really liked, I'm always inspired by other people. Like I am who I am today because of all these really cool people that I've had the opportunity to work with and learn from. And I'm a relatively new teacher as far as being an official educator in a school. And I'm kind of, this is my fourth year. So I feel like I'm kind of at the point now where I can like help other people the way that people have inspired me. So uh, yeah, those are my six words. Nice to meet awesome. everybody. <laughs> And I did get to work with ARC before too. We were together at my old Yeah, school. we worked together. <laughs> okay. In the same school before. Cool. And do we have one more person? Uh, 
um, yeah. Emily, thank you. So I am an inquirer. I am a leader. Um, I'm anti-racist. I am passionate. I am, I hyphenated this, a wannabe photographer. And I am an ideaist. So I like to always generate lots of ideas. So, so I'm wondering, to Hannah, like if there's problems, like solutions, but also not when there's problems. So sometimes I, I, I just come up with a lot of new ideas. Yeah. Is there, there's not a word that's an anti-racist that's not a, a humanist? No, I, I'm, I was just wondering. It's like, is there another word? Positive way to <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anti-racist. I think no, because it would take away the meaning of what from what it, it is to be anti-racist. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've done our icebreaker. Thank you, everybody, for doing that. Uh, for some of us, I think that's easy, and I, I know for some other people, I know it's sometimes oh, I don't want to talk, <laughs> but th that is what we're here for, and, and so thank you. Um, we're going to go into the meat of this meeting in a moment. And I'm going to, if it's okay, just share my screen again, just to show you what uh, CISA has set out for us. And we can adapt it a little bit along the way, uh, what our agenda items can be that we can talk about. Of course, if we wanna stray away from that, then, then all by all means. But here we go, I'm gonna share my screen again. And here we are. Oh, before I share my screen, sorry. I'm gonna share in the chat that Google Doc. Can you just check for me for a second to see can you access that and actually uh, type in it? Or yeah. Can? No. 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 Need access. Yeah. yeah need, need access. access. Need access. Okay. Let me. Uh, editors can change permissions. Viewers and commenters can see. How do I change the access? Okay. <laughs> Go to share. Yeah. Is it shared with our school address? Oh, it might or be. Or did you just have it shared with to anyone with the link? Yes. Did change to anyone with the link and yeah. viewer and editor. Edit, yeah. Here we go. Copy link. Try that again. Yep. Try that. Now. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to sh share my screen. Or I am sharing the screen again. And here we are. So we've done our icebreakers and now our discussions. What are your hopes and dreams and as an educator for its coming school year? Uh, how could these small group sessions help you with achieving your hopes and dreams? And then do you foresee any challenges this school year as you look ahead? <laughs> the next There's no way, right? <laughs> oh, and Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to copy those three questions into that uh, Google Doc, and then uh, we can play it from there. I'm going to just escape and stop sharing. But those would be the questions that we can just kind of bounce around off of. And so I guess my, my first question, if it's okay, I'm going to just start this for a second, is our is Vietnam in the same kind of boat that we are where, and Brunei I know is not, where uh, you are going into the next year in uh, lockdown? Yes. Is, is Vietnam like that? Yeah. Okay. Hana, what part of Vietnam are you in? I'm in Ho Chi Minh. Yeah. Ho Chi Minh, yeah. Yeah, so. we just, I'm in Hanoi and so we just, the lockdown just happened like two days ago. Yeah. 15 yeah. days. Yeah, it's going to be longer. <laughs> I think I think it will be. You guys are just starting lockdown as well. Yeah, I think H men we we're in our of severe lockdown. It's been this is our third week, but we've been in kind of semi lockdown for about seven, and they just curfew starts today, so no one's allowed out after six p.m. So, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, yeah. and Brunei, you guys are just going back to school, right? Yeah, we um the the full last year that that we've just finished was all in school as well. So, um yeah, so we're going back into another full hopefully, um and let's straight back into class when we go back. Okay, so you're you're an outlier here because everybody else is going to be in the same boat of hey, how are we planning this next year? And and when I think about uh, how could these small group sessions help you with achieving my hopes and dreams? 
I'm thinking of like near the end of this last school year, we had kids like waning and uh, not wanting to do as much because they got bored with it. Now they're coming in and they might be waning already. <laughs> it's like, how do we add some, you know, oomph to things and make things exciting for them not being face to face? Um, but if we want to just start maybe with uh, our first question there, if we want, and if we don't want to, uh, what are your hopes and dreams as an educator this school year? Does anybody want to tackle that one? Uh, talk about. <laughs> I, I'm hey, thinking my um, first hope and dream is let's get this like lockdown <laughs> done as fast as possible, <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> I guess for us, because we are we are not in lockdown like that, um, it, it's sort of probably easier for me to answer that because it's it's going to be kind of a roll on. Like I I came to Brunei in November last year, and w which was right near the end of term one. This issue's getting visas and you know the whole bits and pieces. But um, I've just started a education research innovation lead role at my school, so. For me, the, the next six months will be sort of trying to balance my classroom with um, picking up that extra um, responsibility and doing some research and um, working towards, um, uh, you know, the project that I'm working on that. So um, that'll be sort of probably a bit of a balancing act. Um, and, but I mean, my classroom, I guess, is, is going to be much the same. I'm quite lucky, you know, mm -hmm. I'll have kids in my room and will be, um, you know, they'll be doing sports days and we had a production just a couple of weeks before the end of the term and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, really, really lucky to be able to still offer those things and be, be able to have parents in and all the rest of it, so. I remember those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I maybe am the only one here that's transitioning to a new school, so. I mean, I think I have very, like every time I transition, I have, you know, kind of similar hopes and dreams about, you know, find, finding your place in the learning community. Um, I think for me, I want to be really mindful of um, not like, I, I know that we, everybody has their own level of pandemic fatigue, but like for me bringing what was happening in Japan, like here to like Vietnam with my students, I just want to be really mindful of not doing that. And um, yeah, and I think, especially when I know what this is like a seesaw focused um, group, but um, again, in, in, the, in the past, a lot of my students had used seesaw for the, like their online portfolios and it was quite rich. And then when online learning happened, it really transitioned much more into like an LMS a learning management system. And we lost pieces and parts and like really identity of, of kind of who students were because it just overtook, right? Like so much was online and with starting for distance learning, I guess that's a hope and a dream that I have as well with using the Seesaw tool is that um, while we know we're going to be using it to for activities and learning engagements during the day, how can I also use it to be, you know, authentically representing that child and ha having them have ownership of it. So I think there's gonna be, for me, that's like a very Seesaw specific hope and dream, but looking for guidance and suggestions from this group. So you said something there and I wanted to just kind of add a question. Uh, you're using CESA almost like the LMS. It is, are any other schools using CESA in conjunction with something that's more of the LMS for the uh, little kids? Like for example, are you using CESA in conjunction with Google Classroom or Headrush or are you using something else along with it where kids are referring to that more than CESA? or using CESA as like the main entry point? For us, it's predominantly CESAW, but going into four, five, and six, mm -hmm. um, we do use Classroom as well, but they have very different functions. Yeah. In our school, yeah, uh, grades one to three, CESAW, but four, five, and six, we are using uh, schoolwork, which is Apple-based, um, and keynote and then <laughs> high school like six uh no seven eight nine google classroom but yeah i'm glad i'm just focusing the elementary from grade one to grade six so yeah hmm. 
It's interesting that you're using three different ones. I, uh, okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. We also use Seesaw. Uh, actually, last year it was kind of optional, but I loved it. And the other grade four teacher I teach fourth grade liked it. So we used it a lot. Um, but the upper elementary has Google Classroom and Seesaw. And then the lower elementary has Class Dojo and Seesaw. Oh. Um, and so Seesaw is kind of like the thread that ties it all together. Mm. And personally, like we just found through experience, like because of the adaptability and the differentiation that Seesaw is kind of built into Seesaw, it just, yeah. it does act like uh, Emily said, like it is more of an LMS rather than that online portfolio that I think it was originally uh, used for more maybe in the past. But um, yeah, I think everybody's situation is different. It depends on your kids and your school mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff, like the way that you're able to use it, so. Yeah, yeah. My in my coming from CISO only, nothing else could be used. So mm. I don't, I'm not sure what it will be like at Eunice. I get the impression that it is going to be CISO only. Mm. Yeah. Right. yeah, my school it was very much optional. I was a big fan, so pushed it. Managed to get a few other teachers up and using it, and the students were producing some really good work, and the parents seemed pretty engaged as well. Um, but everything runs through Teams. So we have to, I have to connect everything through Teams. Um, Google, we did use the first time in lockdown, but then that kind of got side panned. It's not very elementary student friendly, Seesaw Classroom. The surface isn't very, um, this year it's still up in the air. So I think that's partly why they pushed the term back because they're still trying to finalize exactly what we can. But I do know an email went out to all primary school teachers saying, please get familiar with Seesaw. So I don't know what that means, but... Um, <laughs> Um, that's one one of my goals because I know I'll be someone that people come to when it comes to seesaw. So I'd like to be able to um, manage my kids, like Emily was saying, like manage the kids who are spent the whole summer. Like I'm teaching third grade, so these students have never had a summer holiday or end of the term. It's been the last kind of last year and this year. It's been a pandemic and um, online, and um, so be mindful to them. Um, I'm not sure if my students will have used it before or not. So kind of, I'm going to have to plan for those who maybe do are familiar with it to those who may be new to it. Um, but as well as kind of being mindful to how I can manage my workload and support other teachers as well. So I think you're a CISA ambassador as well. Is anybody else yeah. an ambassador here? I am as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. We still wanted to learn. <laughs> yeah, keep learning. Right. Okay. Huh. I and do th that. I think that's a really good point too, Hannah. Is um, because I, I I teach grade five older, so definitely last year that was something that was challenging. Starting online mm -hmm. was if I had new students and they had zero um, experience mm -hmm. with seesaw, that mm -hmm. was a a big a big gap as well. So that would be. Um, it, it, it's just lovely to, I think, hear advice and suggestions from mm. other teachers about how to help students orient into yeah. the system if they're new to the platform or anything like that. So, yeah. Mm. Our school, um, I think, Seesaw became the sort of crash course in, um, you know, when everything went online and, and Brunei did lock down last year. So, um, everybody sort of learnt, this was before I came, this is what I've heard, sort of learnt very, very quickly how to how to use it. But then as, you know, we've gone back into school, it's kind of evolved in, in terms of how it's used and, and it's sort of an ongoing um, process. But um, that's the only thing that we use um, uh, completely now. But then for I teach year six, so year five and six, both have their own laptops at school so that also makes it really really easy to do so much stuff because they've all got their own laptops there's no access issues there's no you know waiting to book the trolley or any of that other stuff so um that's made a huge difference to what you can do realistically in the classroom just any time you know they they've got the laptops out and they can be you know publishing or whatever on there so mm -hmm. and and uh with with most of us being ambassadors, you've seen the new tools that are coming out for uh, the accessibility that we're able to add in for, for uh, video and things like that. 
And of course, they've got the translation functions in there. And now that's interesting what they've got for the grade one and two, like they've got the, the, uh, the lessons already almost pre-made for you. It's not there for three, four yet, but uh, that, that's going to be interesting to see. I'm sure that we're going to want to rip it apart as uh, educators and go, wait, 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 you've done this wrong. You need to change this a little bit. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, so kind of looking at, at these, the second question, which is how could these small group sessions help you in achieving your hopes and dreams? Are there certain things that we're hoping to take away from this in particular? Is there a question that's kind of, that you're going, oh man, I really hope that's asked or I hope that's answered. I think for me, I just like really want to know how other people use it and how to get the best out of it. Like I've only been using it since November in the classroom and, you know, like everybody, you know, once you're, you're new into a new school and a new country and things, there's a lot of, you know, the, the feet are paddling flat out under the water. But, you know, I guess really I'd, I'd just be hoping to get some brilliant new ideas of, mm -hmm. I don't want it just to be a place where we stick stuff kids have done. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's, yeah, innovative ideas and things that I can take back to the school. I know we've got a few restrictions mm -hmm. on uh, things that we're not allowed to do so the kids can't communicate internally with each other mm -hmm. or share their work with each other, which um, I'm kind of really disappointed about. I wanted to really use it as a feedback platform. So I've had to use, I use VoiceThread at the moment. I've just started using that so the kids can feedback on each other's work and then we can, you know, so I don't, yeah just coming up with some great new ways of using it and getting the, the best out of it so it doesn't just become like an online portfolio. Oh, because that, that's in the classroom settings that I think as a teacher you're able to change the uh, the toggle of whether kids can see one another's work or not. Um, I, we, we're not allowed to. So it's, Yeah, um, admin it's, can have it switched on or off, can't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah. so they, they the head of primary has deliberately at this stage said he doesn't want that function working. Um, I think there's just a little yeah. bit of caution there around what parents may or may not, you know, that, that whole yeah. thing. So, yeah, like I say, I've, I've gone elsewhere to kind of, of using a, a separate app or a separate okay. you know, program to be right. able to meet that need. So what you, um, might, I, I, what you I, might do is you might go and say to them, hey, could we turn it on? But we'll just uh, keep the vet the comments uh, feature there so that no comments are getting put up without the teacher actually seeing it, because there yeah. is that option, too. Right. Yes, yeah. there is. Oh, is that, that might be, or is might it, be is the it, next step that you could take to them. Is it decide? Is it has it been decided that way because they the feeling at your school is for students to see other posts before submitting? I'm yeah. not. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think because, like I said, it was such a crash course and and everybody getting online and using seesaw, and so it's probably really only been used for perhaps a year, so perhaps just a little bit of trepidation around, you know, um, how it could be used and abused, if you know what I mean, so, mm. um, and, you know, he certainly is a really open-minded guy, so I, I, you know, I think he'll get there, but in the meantime, he's just sort of taking a bit of a softly, softly approach, but. We yeah. haven't switched off as well, um, so the children can only see their own work, because the, the conversation around that is, um, the parents might, you know, be in the, the folders and comparing the work mm -hmm. of the different students. So that was why the decision was taken at our school. But it is really sad if, you know, it can't be used as a community thing then. Mm. Unless you post something <laughs> in the <laughs> journal and, and they can actually comment on that sometimes, but only if they're all tagged in it. So that's mm. the only time I can see any communication with the students. Correct me if I'm I, wrong, I, I, but I, I thought only school. parents can, parents can only see their own child. And they could be on as a child. A different app. So the parents have the parent app, which yeah. is only their child. But if their children are at I see what you're saying. IPad, if you're looking at their yeah, child's exactly, device, yeah. I, I get that. Open. Yeah, mm. I see. that. I'm mm. kind of a, maybe a fear-based mm. approach there. But, but yeah. then, I don't know, certainly I, I guess some parents, they do like to have a little look around and find my <laughs> child doing this and you know my my parents have to follow the same rules as the children though when it comes to comments they've got to be kind positive and helpful otherwise they don't go on yeah so um but I do find it helps especially my lower learners if they can see each other's work oh, gives them ideas yeah. it gives them confidence um and it helps in this pandemic when they're stuck at home it makes them feel like they're kind of with their kids um because no one was using it at my school I kind of asked should we put it on turn it off but no one 
really said. They said it's up to me. So I just kind of, um, in Vietnam, you ask for forgiveness, not for permission. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. Sad to to uh, Mary and Jenna at, or at Shrewsbury, and I guess uh, Krupan as well, um, I, I might approach admin and say, look, if we make it so that kids can see one another's work, this can be used as such an awesome teaching tool as well for how to write comments, because we can put that up and go, look, let's write those kind and helpful comments. Let's use them in sentence format. And then it makes it authentic that the kids actually want to write in English all of a sudden or in their home language. Exactly. And, then, yes. and the, you get so much more writing going on in the comments, I find, without actually having to uh, kind of force them to do it. And then you're going, wait, is this a good comment or have you done this in sentence format? Can you redo that comment, please? Because I'm going to delete it for you. And I would do that often and pull it up on the screen so that people could see it and go, okay, we're always going to use this as an educational, educational platform. We're not doing like the leap speak where it's like, you know, LOL and stuff like that and no, no major emojis and stuff. And uh, exactly. that's, yeah. that's how I might present it and say that they can be vetted. So if you really want to use it, those could be two ways that you could present um, it. Just want to share as well regarding this, this, uh, this, uh, yeah, this topic. Um, in our school, it's, it's also closed. But since there are like EST certified educators there who's like working on the certification as well, and they pass already in me as well, uh, there's like this standard where we build culture for students to be able to be empathically, you know, um, uh, giving feedback to one another. And we saw CISO as an, you know, as a platform for students to be able to create that culture. And so we are now in the process of like, uh, you know, talking to the administrators and then having this set of plans and then uh, working on, um, you know, scripts where students can, can use to, you know, give, you know, be given as a guide for them to uh, give feedback to one another. And that's, that's our plan this, this coming, uh, you know, August and, Somehow it's going to be like um, closed first, but without the training for students or each teacher going through like their homerooms teaching about these uh, digital citizenship, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, criteria. Then only until then we will open that that um, that platform, you know, where students can be able to comment on each other uh, positively. And then when there are also like mistakes. You know, we, we, we also plan for disciplinary actions or things that we can do so, to, you know, positively affect people who are like not doing properly, doing it properly otherwise. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks, Derek. I'm just looking at the time. We had said that 6.45, we were going to have a hard okay. stop end. And we can attend to this now. I, I had some uh, closing <laughs> remarks that were supposed to take about five minutes. Our conversation is still going, uh, and we're all adults. We had said that in theory, but now in practice, do we want to continue on for a little bit longer, or do we want to have our hard stop? And I'll just close this session thinking about tomorrow. I, I have a commitment at seven, so I for sure need to leave in a couple minutes if that's need okay. To leave. okay. But if everybody else is okay, I'm fine with, you know, you can fill me in when I, tomorrow. <laughs> I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the last little bit. And then if we want to have trickle on conversations, then uh, people that need to leave can leave. And then people that uh, would just like to continue on or ask something else, uh, we'll, we'll go to that. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm going to share my screen again just for a sec. Uh, here we go. And okay, wrap ups. So before tomorrow's session at 6 p.m., please brainstorm ways that you can use CISA when creating classroom routines. Also, you will receive a participant certificate from CISA. They want you to know that. Uh, and there will be a participation link for feedback in an email coming today at 7.30. The link is going to close on October 15th, so you have some time. Uh, at the end of the day. I don't know what the end of the day means, but that's what CISA said. So maybe that means 11.59. <laughs> the link is the only way they are able to access the partition, participation uh, certificate. And again, I will put these wrap-ups and reminders in, uh, okay. Okay. in the notes.
but you, I, I saw Ark, you're taking some photos and stuff. Thanks. Uh, I'll put those into the notes. And if there are other things in the notes, um, Mary, I, I'm really thinking about how are people using it in your question and what you'd like to see it. And in our, uh, in our overview of our four meetings, I, I don't know that they have that really built in. So I'm going to figure out a way that we can make sure that we're kind of giving some time where we can have maybe some, you know, share. <laughs> it's like, here's what mm. we're doing. Share your screen. And uh, because I think that that's uh, some of the best PD. And you go, even if it's like we're the ambassadors and we've been doing things forever, and you see that one little thing that's like, oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> so I, I'm going to figure out how we can build that into uh, the next couple of sessions and stuff. So for now, we have September 20th, 6 p.m. is going to be our fourth session. Yes. We have uh, some notes that are up there. If you want to just click beside the, that you were here, I think only you, Adi, didn't come today. Uh, and then if you have other questions for your hopes and dreams, please put them there, and then I'll try to think about them for tomorrow. I'm going to put those other questions up there. And then if, uh, if you need to go, Heidi, or if anybody else needs to go, uh, thank you for attending today. Yes, it's nice to meet everybody. I'm going to click off, but I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, Heidi. Oh, let me just put the other notes in here. Oh, that was big. <laughs> So, I was just typing some things on our Google Docs, so that way it's... Yeah, it's yeah. So it, it, it seems that we're coming from quite a few different uh, vantage points, perspectives of what we're hoping. Um, at Shrewsbury, are you hoping to actually change the cu culture there of, of opening things up? And Jenna or uh, uh, Kupen, mm -hmm. Kupen, do you have the, uh, the ability to talk to the people to make those changes? Or do you want to make those changes? I think it's quite a, a close thing because at our school, we're actually a small school compared to the much larger Shrewsbury School at Riverside. So we are very much kind of tied together in certain decision-making things. Um, and like the feedback thing, it isn't the children that the concern is with, it's actually the parents that the concern is with. So if you've got a device and you're like in my class, and like one of the parents is looking through it it's not it's not what the children can respond mm. to their work is the actual their concern is the parents looking at other children's work not commenting but then commenting on their line groups or yes. complaining possibly to management that's the concern so it's nothing to do with the children mm. um i mean personally i have my own views on that but i think at this time with the culture the way it is and with children being moved out of schools and um, for what you know because the pandemic money mm -hmm. like the support you can provide there are all these factors so i think at the moment it's going to be played safe yeah right and <laughs> yeah if we go back to school normally the children will have their own seesaw mm -hmm. class so they can see their friends work it's okay yeah. it's difficult now because they are online learning so the parents quite nosy they want to see the other children's work <laughs> as well and they comparing and then they like this is, this is the time that they need to see it yeah is, you know the kids need to see it not that the parent yeah. this is the time that the kids need to see and learn yes. from one another and comment on one another so it's not just a top down i agree it's like the, like, the oh, parents no. culture well so so this it's hard to control the parents so this is something that I maybe would put this under like a goal or a question kind of linked to that. Cause something that I was wondering, um, like at, you know, previous schools. And I think also at the school, there are uh, parent events for like Seesaw, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, and like a little chat or anything like that. It's almost never ever given or a classroom teacher is part of it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think there is sometimes a disconnect, right? When there's someone who isn't a, a teacher of a seesaw classroom sometimes that has day-to-day -day knowledge of that, that isn't there helping parents kind of, you know, 
positively put the intent up there. So I'm wondering if anyone here has had the opportunity as like a, you know, in their role or like as a homeroom teacher to do a parent event with Seesaw mm -hmm. or an introduction or a way to like start off the year. Mm -hmm. um, Cause that could be really great for us to also share ideas and, and try to develop. I, I've done a lot of uh, parent events. Uh, we, we would do them every Tuesday at my last school for six years. Um, and a lot, a lot of the culture that came around was actually through fun and play. And then we would kind of tag in some, uh, here's some learning bits at the end. So we might get the parents coming in and it's like, we're going to teach you how to use iMovie. And by the way, in Seesaw, or, or especially for parents that are like, how do I clamp down Johnny's uh, so-and-so so he can't play his video games? It's like, let's have a conversation about that, actually, because what, what you're actually saying is you want to control everything when you should be sitting beside them and educating them. And anytime you try to clamp things down, that's when the kids and the parents are going to find the way to, you know, figure around the system anyway. Uh, and that just sets a new goal for them. And they are going to find that way. They're going to go into the root drive and just get around everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and so, yeah, I guess going back to the, your, your question or, or your ask was we, we would trick people into uh, coming to things with some fun things. Mm -hmm. And not, not really trick, but like we would add those in as like bonuses, if, especially if we weren't getting the numbers that we were hoping to come out. But you would, and maybe this is at all schools, you would see the same parents often and you wouldn't see some of the ones that you would hope to see. That's, a, that's the hardest part, isn't it? When, you know, you sort of go to a lot of effort to educate parents around any changes that you bring in or anything that you know that they're concerned about, even school camps and things like that, you know, that you'd think parents would be, you know, really gung-ho at getting in there and finding out what's happening with their kids or parent-teacher conferences or whatever you, you know, whatever you want to call those, um, you know, some parents just never even come to those. And I guess that's that's the hardest thing when you're trying to um, open the doors of communication and educate parents when they when they don't come. Um, but they're just as likely to be the ones that are on there having a good look at everybody else's and on the WhatsApp mm -hmm. groups and the like. So um, it's, it's sort of a, yeah, it's, it's quite a... Um, it's a fine balance, isn't it, between, I mean, the kid, it's the kids and the education that's missing out because of the parents, which is, is about the saddest thing you can um, you can think of, really, isn't it? We've all come across this, I, I'm sure everyone has, many times in lots of different things where things are, you know, don't go to plan because we've had to skirt around what parents might or might not yeah. um, agree with. And, and that's a real shame because, it's so, I think... You know, for me, I'm really sad that I can't use Seesaw as the platform that I want. Um, so I've had to go out and find something else, which, you know, works beautifully. It works an absolute treat. But then I'm, I'm sending my kids. I'm having to send my kids out to go to different sites to, to do something that I could probably get to work on Seesaw rather than, mm. you know. Mm. And, and I just, I paid out of my own pocket. It wasn't very much, like $15 for, it was the last month of school where I wanted to try Voice Street out with my kids. Um, and it worked absolutely fantastically, but it just seems a shame to to be doing that when I could be using Seesaw to do the do the same thing. But it does it does sound, Mary, like uh, you might be able to change the culture at your school faster than Shrewsbury will because they're such a big international conglomerate, <laughs> right? That like you yeah. might be able to change the minds of the people in in Bangkok, but then you have uh, England to change and and who knows what other campuses, right? I'm, I'm lucky with the um, era role I've taken on. It, it does come with quite a bit of, um, you do get a bit of clout. So my project is inquiry-based learning. So we're a UK curriculum school, which has traditionally been quite old school UK curriculum, and they're wanting to get into an inquiry-based program. So um, basically the next year for me is researching how that might look in our school. So I'm really wanting to... Um, find ways of, you know, like seesaw as part of that picture and, and changing mindset around, um, you know, how we communicate and how the children use it so that it is more of a, a learning platform, like I said, rather than just, you know, a virtual kind of, you know, the old journals that we used to send home with, you know, everything mm. pasted into a big book. So, um, yeah, so I'm hoping to sort of, yeah, find ways that we can we can use it better and, and um, yeah. I'm excited to show you some things that we do. I won't show today, but I, I'm excited to see what 
many other people are doing too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like you said, it's the best PD ever, isn't it? Hearing what other people do because you're also getting the benefit of their trial and error as well. <laughs> mm, sure. In my last role at my uh, last school, uh, I was able to work with the principals and admin and we set up what was called teachers teaching teachers. And so the PD that we had was basically the, the admin would go in and uh, give time off to certain grade levels and they would go into just the grade level above and grade level below and see what they were doing. And they could do like quick glimpses or uh, long hauls and look specifically either at what the students would do, they were doing or at what the environment was like in the classroom. And they, they walked away and just, they all said it was the best PD ever mm -hmm. from their peers. And they just needed to walk into the classroom while it was live. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we just gave them the, the ability to do that was, was really neat. I uh, think that's it plus nothing. <laughs> time is like the biggest thing of all. And if, I don't know, I think sometimes time is not really understood and the benefits that could come from that. And, you know, showing and sharing what we have and, yeah, but you can't make time, sadly. Well, you yeah. can. You can set it apart. <laughs> Whenever you say, oh, I don't have time for that, it's, 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 it's time. I'm not making time for that. Mm. So it is, it's a mindset. And, and I would disagree with you there, actually. And I'm going to agree with what Mary said. You save time because you learn from everyone else's trial and errors. But if yeah. you're not, if you're not like, fundamentally, no. like, say, like, given the time to share, like if that's yeah. not recognized as something that's valuable, then your hands are tied. Mm. You can want to do something as much as you like, but if there isn't that resource available, mm. then you know everyone's in their own rooms doing their own things, and that's that's a shame. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially now. Because I mean, yeah, when you get to walk into other teachers' classrooms, I, I was a tech integrator and tech coach for many years. And walking into all the classes, you went, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And that, I, I was, I didn't think of myself as that. I thought of myself as like a bee pollinator. Cause I would be like, you need to go down and see what uh, Sally's doing down the hallway because it's fantastic. And you'll learn so much. And the kids in your class are gonna benefit from that. And so they'd be like, okay. And I'd be like, how about I hang out here for like 10 minutes, go over there and go do it. <laughs> and they would just check things out. And so if any of you have that possibility as that role then let teachers go see things. And talking about other teachers is like the coolest thing. It's like, wow, go see what they're doing. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, see some good examples, cover things. Tomorrow's brainstorm. Any last you, thoughts? Remind, will you remind me what we're brainstorming about? The brainstorm. So it's in the notes, and the brainstorm is. Uh, Ways you can use seesaw when creating a classroom routine. Routine. Oh, I was typing at the very top. My apologies. I'm like, I don't see any notes. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. If you go down a little bit, there's the jumps to each meeting. You can I'll if I may, If I may share a little bit, yeah. Um, my hopes and dreams as an educator is like for us to really just make the students you know enjoy learning and to see them working together and me facilitating that would be like a, a dream come true for me and so how can this group um help me with that um i believe that yeah just simply sharing what we're doing with our school whether it's like not working properly or it work it's working properly we can avoid those things that we share that is not working properly and we can, you know, implement the things or start planning to implement things that work with other schools or with other members here. And so I'm just excited. Yeah. Just because I'm, I'm with you guys and then I'm hope that you're going to be sharing and sharing what you guys are doing or planning to do. And then maybe we can do it together, you know, start implementing things. Maybe some of us are ahead and some of us are like, still in the planning stage, but nevertheless, you know, we, we go together. <laughs> One little thing that we, we always do on uh, CESA is we have the hand signals for kids so they don't need to even say anything. So this means I agree. This means <laughs> I want to add something. Mm. I disagree. 
Uh, this means they just need to run to the toilet. <laughs> and yeah, so we, we have all these hand signals so that anything that's kind of a, an ongoing thing, we go, oh, we need a hand signal for that. And that way uh, people are going, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, or I, I need to add on. I have to add on. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. um, and just... my add on was at the end of these uh, of these notes, you'll see that there's uh, some links on. I'm not sure what page it's on, but there are the the CISA Connect that's opening up today, and the Bitly that's there, and there's a whole bunch of PD there for us. It's on top of these little meets that we're doing right now. And the links are there if you didn't have that already uh, from CISA. So I just thought I would point that out because I thought it might be a, an end. And I might just say, let's close up for today. We're going to meet again tomorrow at 6, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, just look through the notes. Everybody's able to get into the note. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there should be an email coming from uh, from me today at 7.38. It should be scheduled. Okay. okay. Uh, and it's just, I don't know if we have to do it every day, but CISA told me to send this every day at the end of our meeting. So it might be the same thing it's asking you. And I apologize because I scheduled everything all at once and batch uploaded it. So thank you so much for now. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Thank you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.